Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about CSS border radius. CSS border radius properties, they're going to provide curves around the corners of a CSS box. So the uh, syntax for HTML is simple. We have two sections with no content inside of them. So in CSS, I'm going to grab the body and I'm going to say margin 0. Uh, height, let's set it to 100 VH. Now 100 VH, uh, VH stands for viewport height. So if I just open up this browser, all the height starting from right here all the way to the top of my taskbar to the bottom of my taskbar, all the white space that you can see from top to bottom that you can see, not the space that you cannot see, the space that you can see. The distance from top to bottom, that is 100 viewport height. It means that there are 100 rectangular blocks sitting on top of each other to, to create this height. Um, um, then we have a viewport width, which is from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. So starting from this edge, going all the way to this edge. And think of it like 100 blocks standing next to each other to create this width. So we have 100 viewport height, 100 viewport width. So if you provide it to 100 viewport height, it means all the viewport that the user can see. Viewport height is a highly flexible unit. So if you're, uh, for me, it's usually around 700. You can find it through here. And for that, you need to dock this one. So if you just come in here, click on this, and if you come in here, you can see that for me, the viewport width is 1536 pixels. The viewport height is around 690, around 700. So if I save that, and if I remove the padding as well, let's save that. Uh, let's come in here. Uh, so it's 754. I was wrong. So it's 754. Point four. This is the viewport height. 1536 is viewport width. Um, this is highly, highly relative. Very, very much so relative. What do I mean by that? This is a very cool unit that we use whenever we want to create a responsive website. And um, if, you, if the screen for your laptop, for mine is 15.6 inches, if for yours it is 13 or 14, this viewport height is going to be different. If it is like a large TV, it's going to be different. If it is a smartphone, it's going to be different. So it is flexible. This is a good thing. It means that you can change the layout of your website depending on the device it's being browsed on. So this is a very cool unit that is being used a lot, like a lot when it comes to responsiveness. So that's, this is 100 viewport height. So I'm going to say display flex just to align some stuff. Uh, flex is alignment properties, uh, align items. When you say display flex, uh, you usually provide flex on a container. In this case, body is the container, which has two children, section and section. And whenever you on the body, you say display flex, the children are going to become flex items. And the container is going to become flex container. All the children, you can align them better. Uh, the default direction of flex is row or horizontal. Uh, the align, uh, when it is horizontal, we have a, a, a vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. Vertical al um, alignment is handled, I'm going to say vertical alignment is handled by, I'm going to remove it, by align items and horizontal is handled by justify content. This is when the flux direction is row. If the flux direction changes to column, these two are going to get reversed. We're going to, we are going to change them. So we are going to uh, provide align items for, uh, for horizontal and justify content for vertical. So that's, I don't want to talk about flex a lot because it's way beyond the scope of this CSS course. When I set it to center, and the uh, default uh, value for the flex direction is row. You can find it in the browser styles, which I've shown you multiple times. Align items is going to apply vertically. I'm going to grab the section. I'm going to provide some styling. I'm going to say height, 
350 pixels uh, whenever you don't have any content you need to provide it with a height and width because it has been shrunk to zero background color of rgb 177169953 save that here is our box and margin auto should i provide it margin auto auto there we go so I've, I've basically provided some margins for it and um, they're in the middle right so i'm going to keep it like this so whenever we say border radius it means that we have one corner top left this is the um the way that border radius is going to be applied first on the top left then top right then bottom right and then bottom left so you can see we have sharp corners what if you want to make them like curvy you know like curvy then uh, you're going to provide like border radius so i'm going to say border top left radius this is the first property i'm going to set it to 10 pixels and you're going to see that there we go for both of those of course then um you know what i'm just going to keep it like this so you can see both of them at the same time the next one is going to be border top right radius uh, i'm going to provide it 20 no 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 30 pixels so you can see that this a this is like curvier if that's a word in dictionary this is more curvy than this one and then we have border bottom right radius this uh, um you don't you shouldn't confuse this uh the uh, the thing that you have in HTML, it's Emmet, but the thing that you have in CSS is IntelliSense, which is provided by by VS Code itself. This uh, completing this this line, it's used for uh, just to boost your productivity. So bottom right radius is going to be 10 pixel, this one, and bottom left radius is going to be bottom. Uh, oops, uh, this is border border bottom um where is left left radius 30 pixels there we go so this is how you can create like curvy uh, corners for your boxes now we do have some shorthand properties as well now whenever you say border radius this is a shorthand property it is going to accept four values the first value is for the top left keep that in mind if you if you tend to forget the order i've provided you with the order here so the first one is top left then we have top right i'm just going to comment this one out and save it so you can see the changes uh, then we have top right bottom right bottom left there we go so we got basically the same thing uh, there is another shorthand as well i'm going to provide it that is going to be applied throughout this like around this box top left top right bottom right bottom left on all four corners and if you want to create perfect circles you have to make sure that the height and width are equal and the border radius is set to 50 percent this is just a cool trick that you can create perfect circles in css in case you needed to like do some game design which i've done a lot in my javascript course feel free to check it out so we have border radius if you say 50 percent it's applied on top left top right bottom right bottom left at the same time and you're going to end up with a circle that's it for this lecture see you in the next one